During their summer vacation, MIT students Nick, Haley, and Jonah are on a road trip to California. The boys are helping Haley move, and her decision to live in another state for a year has brought some tension between her and Nick because they don't know what will happen to their relationship. The fact Nick suffers from muscular dystrophy, which makes him see himself as a burden, has added a distance between them that Haley hates. However the trio still tries to have as much fun as possible during the trip, and they stop to eat at various restaurants, visit the aquarium, and Nick even teaches a little kid how to get a toy from the claw machine. One evening when they're resting at a motel, Nick gets a message asking him if he's agitated. This comes from Nomad, a hacker the boys contacted in the past to fool around, but when Nomad hacked into the MIT servers, the college administration tried to blame them and almost got them expelled. Nick immediately wakes Jonah up and together they get on Nick's computer to find more taunting and cryptic messages from Nomad, prompting them to reply that Nomad should watch his back because they're going to expose him. Nomad replies by sending a video of themselves inside the room, which he has acquired by hacking their laptop. Furious, the boys immediately get down to work and begin tracking Nomad's IP until they find his address in Nevada, where they should be driving by soon. The next day while they're back on the road, Nomad sends them a picture of their car, which he got from a security camera, prompting Haley to ask the boys to stop taunting the guy. Later, when they stop at a gas station to buy some food, Nick tells Jonah he doesn't want to go after Nomad because he'd rather concentrate on Haley's journey now, which leaves Jonah very frustrated. A few days pass with the trio stopping at any tourist site they find on their way. During their next break at a gas station, Nick goes inside to buy some coffee, and Haley takes the chance to talk to Jonah in private. She asks Jonah if Nick has said anything about her decision to move, but Jonah only tells her Nick is bummed, refusing to get in the middle of their issues. At that moment, Nick comes out with the coffee, but he trips and falls to the ground. His friends rush to help him, but Nick swears he's fine and goes back inside to get more coffee. Haley goes after him and tells him she wants to help precisely because she knows Nick doesn't need it, but Nick continues to be cold. A moment later when Nick returns to the car with the coffee, he tells Jonah he changed his mind and that he does want to go after Nomad. He also notices Haley is gone and goes looking for her, finding her sitting at the cliff. Haley can guess Nick is gonna break up with her and wonders why, thus Nick explains he'll soon be in a wheelchair and doesn't want to hold her back. This hurts Haley because she thought their relationship was stronger than that, and she gets rid of the necklace he gifted her before returning to the car. When they go back to the road, Haley announces she wants to go with the boys to catch Nomad. Night has fallen by the time they reach Nomad's address, which is an old house in the middle of the countryside. The boys begin to wonder if the IP had been faked, and they ask Haley to stay in the car while they go inside with their camera ready to record everything. Outside there's an old broken chair and an abandoned car near a creepy tree, and inside it isn't much better, lots of dirty broken furniture. Nick goes deeper into the house and suddenly finds himself alone so he goes looking for Jonah, who is sitting on a chair in the corner. This makes Nick worry and come closer, but Jonah turns around to scare him as a prank. Next the boys go to the basement, where they find a bunch of dusty server tracks. Their search is suddenly interrupted by Haley screaming, causing the boys to run outside to check on her only to find the car open and Haley gone. The radio is going crazy, and there are some noises coming from the woods, including Haley's panting. The boys go after her, but at that moment, they see Haley floating away right before a light blinds them and they pass out. Sometime later, Nick wakes up inside some kind of sterile underground facility, wearing nothing but a hospital gown and a blanket on his legs as he's moved around in a wheelchair by a man in a hazmat suit. Nick feels dizzy and can't move so he can only watch as he's taken to an office where he meets Dr. Damon, who is recording their chat and taking notes. Damon doesn't tell him where he is and refuses to let Nick call his parents, but he does explain the trio got in contact with an alien and that's why he's wearing a hazmat suit, there's a risk of contamination. Damon also wants to know when Nick saw the signal for the first time, but Nick doesn't understand any of these explanations and demands to know where his friends are. Instead of answering, Damon rushes to his side to check on him, but it turns out Nick just has a nosebleed. Afterward, Nick is left in his room, where he discovers he has the numbers 23541 tattooed on his arm and that he can't feel his legs. The door is locked and he can't leave unless they come for him, but there's a keypad that he could use to escape if he can figure out the password. The men in the hazmat suits pick Nick up from his room often in order to do a bunch of tests, and Nick gets a chance to peek inside other rooms, which are either empty or being cleaned off because something nasty happened in them. In one of these many rooms Nick manages to find Haley, but the men won't allow him to go inside. The next time Nick is taken to Damon, he asks permission to see Haley, but Damon refuses. Then begins asking some weird control questions, like if Nick is from Earth and if he has 10 toes. Then he asks about the signal the friends have been following and Nick guesses he means Nomad, so he shares the whole story about the hacker. At that moment, Damon brings in the recording the boys did while investigating the house and stops the video when it shows the tree, revealing that there's an alien standing on it. This means Nomad was never human. Later in his room, Nick is so disturbed that he can't eat. Suddenly he hears a voice calling his name, it's Jonah, talking to him through the vents that connect their rooms. Jonah wasn't told many things either and didn't even get to see Haley, but he does say his body doesn't feel well. 
Unfortunately Jonah needs to cut the conversation short before they're discovered. During his next meeting with Damon, Nick is asked to do a basic test involving shapes, colors, and numbers. Nick finishes it quickly using lots of sass to call them out for treating him like this and demands to see Haley, otherwise he won't cooperate anymore. Damon takes Nick to Haley's room, but they still don't enter, and her file is completely empty because she's in a coma. But Damon promises that as soon as she wakes up, Nick will be the first one to see her. Nick returns to his room determined to come up with a plan to escape. He starts by throwing cracker crumbs at the keypad, that way he can tell which buttons are pressed by the employees. He also exchanges information with Jonah through the vent, and together they learn the schedule kept in the facility, which is run like a clock. Jonah sounds more depressed every day though, and he tells Nick that he hasn't been able to feel his arm since they gave him something weird to drink. One evening, in another section of the facility, the workers are running an unexplained test with a cow, pressing buttons to cause agitation. Suddenly the lights go out and the alarm voice announces security has been breached. All the workers run around to take care of the issue, prompting Nick to try to hide in the bathroom, but the men find him and take him to an office where they wait until the emergency is over. When they come out, Nick discovers scorch marks on the hallway walls. During his next meeting with Damon, Nick demands to know what happened in the hallway and to be taken to Jonah. He knows the workers have security cameras and probably saw him talk to Jonah through the vent, so there's no point in hiding it, but Damon doesn't know what he's talking about. According to the doctor, Jonah was never in the facility. Nick refuses to believe it, but when he returns to his room, Jonah can't be heard through the vent anymore. Losing Jonah is the final kick Nick needs to try to pull off his plan. One afternoon, the workers find the room empty, and under the bed sheets there's a map Nick has created of the facility to memorize the schedule and the password for the keypad. Nick finally figured it all out and is now going down the corridor dragging Haley's bed behind him in order to escape. He counts the seconds around every corner to know when a worker is about to pass by and manages to reach the exit door, only to realize he can't reach the keypad. Nick still can't feel his legs so he tries to press the buttons using his four tube, but unfortunately, at that moment the alarm begins ringing and the workers catch Nick in the act. Nick suddenly passes out and dreams of all the happy times he used to have with Haley and running marathons. When he wakes up, he finds himself in a room with Haley, who is finally awake too. Crying, Haley says she dreamt about Nick winning the nationals and the two of them try to hold hands, but the workers pull them apart. As Haley falls unconscious again, Nick struggles against the men's hold and falls to the floor, where he notices weird stains on his hands. When he looks down, he's shocked to discover his real legs have been changed for advanced prosthetics. Nick begins panicking, and after checking under his underwear to be sure things are fine there, he tries to stand up, tripping as he goes. On the other side of the one-way mirror, Damon explains this is exactly why they didn't say anything before, they had to wait for Nick to be ready. Not caring about any excuses, Nick ties a blanket around his legs to avoid looking at the metal and trashes the whole room. Then he uses his new legs to kick down the door and escape with Haley again. Now that he can walk, whenever a worker tries to stop him he just knocks them down with his crutch, and any door in his way is kicked down too. Nick manages to make it to the elevator with Haley and there he's approached by Damon, who explains it's very dangerous for Nick out there and he can only protect him in here. Nick wants to know what he means but the elevator doors close. Moments later, the duo is escaping the facility through a dark tunnel. By the time they make it outside, Haley is awake again, and together they hitchhike a ride with an old lady. She seems to be harmless, but the way she talks is disturbing, as she wasn't completely sane. She even stops the car in the middle of the road to hear God's little angels with her mouth open. The lady leaves the teens at a diner by the road, and Nick asks Haley to wait for him sitting in a truck while he goes inside to make a call. Luckily nobody comments on Nick's clothes when he enters the place, but trying to use the phone is pointless because it isn't working. Suddenly Nick hears the truck outside leave with Haley, and he soon discovers why, they're saying on TV that Nick and Haley have escaped and anyone that sees them should take them to the authorities. Desperate, Nick begins running after the truck and reaches the window, but the trucker hits him with the door to push him off. When the driver begins going at a very high speed, Nick just uses his new legs to easily catch up with him. The trucker's trying to think of what to do when out of a sudden he hears a noise next to him, it's Haley, who has found the man's gun and is using it to make him stop. The couple reunites and leaves the driver on the road to escape in the truck. Meanwhile Damon and his men are outside too, looking for the teens. They come across the old lady first and they bring her into the facility for interrogation. However when the lady only keeps speaking nonsense, Damon brings in a gun to end what he considers her suffering. Back to the teens, they discover the road they took is a dead end, which doesn't make sense because it looks like it disappeared overnight. They turn the truck around and take a different road, but soon they feel like they're going in circles and driving through the same places. Eventually they decide to stop at a visitor's center to look for clues, but phones don't work here either and all paperwork is related to nature. The only map they find is a giant diorama that doesn't make sense because it doesn't match the roads they just took. Haley keeps showing signs that she isn't well and Nick decides they'll spend the night there. This gives Damon and his men time to find them, so the couple runs deeper into the building to hide. They get scared when they come across a person in a hazmat suit, but this turns out to be Jonah, 
who had been in the facility just like Nick thought and he escaped by wearing the suit to go unnoticed. As the men surround the area, Damon goes to check on the neighbor in charge of the center, who is talking nonsense just like the old lady. Damon admits being fascinated by the man, but he still shoots him before putting a fallen fish back into its bowl. In the visitor's center, Haley falls asleep and Nick discovers she has some kind of implant on her spine. Jonah explains he thinks they're in Area 51, as proven by the fact the numbers on their tattoos add to 51. Nothing here is real, the roads don't make sense and the locals behaved oddly, making Jonah think they're in some government annex where the three of them are being used for experiments. Nick got the legs, and in Jonah's case, he reveals his arms were changed for prosthetics as well. There's only one road they can take, so in the morning the trio drives up to a military checkpoint on purpose. Jonah tries to pretend to be a worker by using the hazmat suit, but the military doesn't buy it and surrounds the truck. Immediately Jonah hits a soldier with the truck door and takes his weapon, which he uses to get the following soldiers off his back and enter the nearest building. There, Jonah tries to use a computer to expose what's going on, but his thick metal fingers can't reach the keys. At that moment, the soldiers throw a grenade through the window and the building explodes. Nick thinks he's lost Jonah, but he's actually alive, and he goes out to reunite with his friends. A soldier takes the chance to shoot Jonah and Nick runs to help him, but a defeated Jonah tells Nick to run away with Haley while he takes care of things as his last wish. Nick and Haley escape on the truck while Jonah uses his new prosthetic arms to begin destroying all the surrounding structures and even the road itself, keeping the soldiers back. Moments later, Nick and Haley are about to cross the only bridge that can get them over the canyon only to find the road blocked by Damon and his men, who shoot at the tires and make the truck crash. Nick begins having more flashbacks of his old life before falling to the ground, where Haley reveals she still has the necklace and hands it to him while saying I love you. The facility workers take Haley away and Damon approaches Nick to tell him he's the perfect fusion of human and alien technology, their finest achievement. Nick looks at him and finally realizes Damon spelled backward is nomad, and this guy is the hacker they had been talking to all along. Damon confirms this and reminds Nick he had been the one to approach the hacker first. Furious and grieving, Nick is finally agitated enough to activate the full power of his legs. He runs through the bridge at an incredibly high speed until he hits an invisible wall, which he smashes and crosses in seconds. To his shock, Nick discovers he's been in outer space all along. Damon is an alien android, and the Earth locations had been part of a simulation. They're actually on an alien spacecraft numbered 23541, just like Nick's tattoo, and this ship is about to dock on a strange alien world. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.